Welcome to Getting Started with FlexRule. We've used the use case, Keeping CRM Up to Date, to show you some of the components of FlexRule. We start with FlexRule Designer and we create a new project, CRM Update Process. Let's start with decision automation and we're going to build out some simple business rules. Selecting decision logic, we're going to use a decision table. We could have used natural language or tree or subtree. So we now have our decision table template and the first condition we're going to put in is stage. What stage is the opportunity at? The next one is last updated. When was it last updated? And finally we're going to add an action, add it to the update list. Now we can put in the rules. The first rule is if it's at qualify stage, hasn't been updated for 90 days, add it to the list. Second rule, if it's at the proposed stage, hasn't been updated for 60 days, add it to the list. Instead of entering this in manually, we can use a predefined business glossary of terms. Here we've defined stage and you can give these any type now all we have to do here is actually just link it by saying we're going to use the term stage. So now when I go to put the entries in, I actually get a drop down of the different options. This guides the user through what they can put in. Finally, if there are no matches, there's no update needed. So now we have to tell the project how to read in and out data. So we add in variables or parameters. Stage is an in parameter, last updated is an in parameter, and then we define the out parameter, update. We add these to the columns. Update is update, last updated is last updated. Now with stage we use the business glossary, so we define in the business glossary stage, that can now be used throughout the model. With the decision table now complete, we can click on the validate button to test there are no conflicts or overlaps in the rules and all the data connections are in place. Now we can start running our model with data. Here is some data we prepared earlier. Run one is stage equals proposed last updated 75 days. Clicking on debug mode will step through the decisions. First decision, qualify, no. Second decision, proposed, and it's greater than 60 days. Therefore, you can see our results in the bottom right. We'll run now another set of data. This time run two is that it's stage equals qualify, and last update was 80 days. Again, using debug mode, we step through the model. It passes the first rule, the second rule, the third rule, so therefore it doesn't need updating. Again, the results are in the bottom window. We now want to put our decision automation inside a workflow. We select business logic workflow and we create that document to put inside our project. Once we've created our workflow document, we can open that up and start dragging and dropping the process steps. Here we're pulling in a Salesforce pre-templated authentication REST API. This allows us to get a token to log into Salesforce. Next we pull in another Salesforce pre-templated REST API this one is to query the data in Salesforce that we can use in our decision automation. We're now going to add a decision requirements diagram or a decision graph and this is very important because it allows us to structure our decisions. We'll cover this off in more detail in the next section. After that we're creating a task for the sales rep to update those opportunities that we've discovered in our decision automation need updating. And once we've done that, we simply finish the whole workflow with an end. The decision graph is very important for simplifying the complex. What we mean by that is instead of being stuck down in what we call the big bucket of rules, we can elevate this up into the business decisions that we need to make. The first one is our sales forecast. What should we be submitting up the line? But that's dependent on what are the recommendations we're making to update those out of date CRM opportunities. And we can actually now drag and drop that decision table that we did earlier and connect that up to know what opportunities we need to update in the first place. We can now go back up to our workflow and there's our decision graph. We can open up that document and there's our decisions which have been auto sequenced by FlexRule. We can now open up our decisions and there's our decision table.
Now our data analytics folks have told us we can make even better recommendations if we add in some other data sources. So we're building here a data pool and we drag and drop those Salesforce REST APIs into the pool. We're now adding a database. Here what we have to do is add the connection string. We also have to tell it what sort of database it is. Flexrule can even handle custom databases. And there you put in your queries. We can even handle stored procedures. And then some of this data might even be in a spreadsheet. So you drag and drop and we can read from spreadsheets. Once we've read all of our data sources in, we now need to compose and transpose that data ready to be used by the decisions in our decision graph. What we've done here is dragged in what we call an information requirements diagram. And what we can do with this document is perform a whole series of what's called monodic operators on the data. We're adding in here where the data is coming from, and then we can do selects, group, minus, join, filter, whatever we need to put this data into the right format. And this is all done in memory, so it's very quick and preserves privacy. We now have our completed flex rule project. We open up the information requirements diagram. There's our monodic operators. We open up the decision graph. And there is the business decisions we need to make. And if we open up one of the decisions, we can see the business rules we've used to implement that. Thank you for your time. And here we've listed some additional resources.